and welcome back to AGT STEM. Today we're going to be watching a video about titanium. So, without further ado, let's hop to it. So here we have a sample of titanium wire. Titanium is a really quite fantastic metal. It's very, very lightweight and very, very strong. It's used in construction materials, very low concentrations, and as additives for alloys. Titanium is a very interesting element, and it's interesting because it's very abundant on the planet. It's not the most abundant metal, but it's still pretty abundant. This is a periodic table where the area of each of the elements here represents the relative amount of this material that is found on the Earth. As you can see, there's a lot of oxygen, a lot of carbon, quite a lot of boron, Debbie's favorite element, some aluminium, again a lot, and here titanium is... Titanium is very small, but so is scandium, like from our, from our last video. They're both very little. Scandium is quite less, but we should be worried about titanium. A lot of the ones down in, or in this relative area are pretty small. Scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, and ma manganese. Iron's large, though. Quite a reasonable amount, nearly as much as potassium. So it's a very common element. So we. Oh, he said the opposite of what I said. I'm going to open it well, now. What What I was trying to say is that there's a lot less than a lot of these up here because it looks pretty small in comparison to like aluminium and silicon and carbon and oxygen for sure. It now and we'll hopefully see the titanium wire around the spindle. So you can see it's a really quite beautiful dark coloration. You can find large deposits of titanium dioxide in various places across the world. We've just had a visitor from South Africa who said not far from where he works in East London, along the coast, there are large deposits of titanium dioxide. The problem is that it is really quite hard to make titanium metal out of the oxide because titanium atoms bond strongly to the oxygen and it's difficult to get them apart and get the metal. And the reason why people want to get the metal is because it's very light. Here I've got a piece of titanium, and it's quite light. You can see I can shake it around in my hands without behaving as, as if it was a really heavy bar. Often used as well in the construction of aerospatial sort of capsules and components to go into. I find it kind of funny how he has this giant, this giant spool and then just this little tiny bit of wire. Space, because it's light and strong. Being light by itself is not much use. Sodium is light. The great thing about titanium is that it is light and it's strong. And also, it doesn't react with water. You couldn't make a car out of sodium, the first rainstorm and boom! But titanium is light, it is strong, so if you're making a vehicle out of it, the vehicle isn't very heavy, so you don't need nearly as much fuel than if you're making the vehicle out of steel. Usually people make the vehicle out of aluminium, which is lighter than steel, but is not nearly as strong. And the great thing about titanium is it's fantastically strong once you get the metal. So the problem getting the metal is from titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is a white powder. In fact, you can see it round you. If you look round the room you're in, almost certainly the walls are white with titanium dioxide. It's a very cheap white pigment. Normally what happens... It's not these walls. These walls are made of wood. But right out there, there's titanium dioxide on the walls, I guess. According to him. I wonder if the doors have that too. Probably not, but... ...happens in the process for making titanium metal is the First of all, it is converted to titanium tetrachloride, TiCl4. And 
If you just leave it as titanium tetrachloride in the air, it will react with the air, with water in the air, and go back to titanium dioxide. You haven't achieved anything. In fact, one of my colleagues, Rich Bourne, showed Brady earlier what happens with this reaction. I've never seen it, but I had to stay in my office and work. However, you can take titanium tetrachloride and convert it to the metal. And once you've got the metal, it's pretty unreactive, provided that you keep it cold. If you put titanium in, at high temperatures in oxygen, it will burn. So there are some processes where you would like to use the strength of titanium, but because there's oxygen there, it's not safe. But cars and most aeroplanes don't get hot enough for the burning in oxygen to be a problem. So it is a fantastic material. And if we could solve the pro problem of how to make titanium metal cheaply in terms of the energy needed to convert the oxide into the metal, then we could have cars that were far more fuel efficient and cheaper to run. So it's a really good goal. Titanium is used at the moment in applications where strength and lightness is more important than cost. If you're building fighter aircraft, where of course cost is important, you, but you need it to be pretty light or you can't, can't get to the speeds that you need to shoot down the enemy and so on, then they will use titanium alloys if those are best. You often use titanium for very high pressure applications. When chemists want to do experiments at high pressure, they will often use titanium because, again, it is very light and, again, strong. It is also has a great advantage that it's non-magnetic. And when you want to, for example, do experiments in a high so if you had a refrigerator made of titanium, or if your car was made of titanium, we wouldn't be able to stick like the car magnets on it, on it the same way that we do. I'm sure lots of people would be upset about that. But the thing they wouldn't be upset about is that they wouldn't have to pay for the high, gra the ga the high gas prices that we have right now. So that it would be pretty nice, but we'd have to suffer with by not having our like bumper magnets or whatever you want to call those. A magnetic field when you need something strong, you can't use steel because your apparatus will be pulled away by the magnet and nothing will work. So titanium has a very special applications which can be very useful but they could be so much more useful if we could apply it more widely. It's used where you really need strength and where money is not terribly important is in hip implants. In your hip, you want to have something that's very strong and very light. Each time you move your leg, you don't want to be moving a cannonball or something really heavy, but you want it to be really strong. And so again, very often hip implants will be made out of titanium. The piece that goes into your leg is made out of titanium and ends in a ball, and the part that goes into your pelvis is often made of polythene, plastic, so that you get the ball and socket effect. Well, one of the most interesting applications of titanium is as a catalyst for making polythene, polyethylene, the material that is used particularly for plastic buckets and other plastic objects. And ethylene was first polymerized, turned into plastic. Some people call it ethene rather than ethylene. Was turned into plastic before the Second World War with a very high pressure reaction that produced a material that was rather soft and you couldn't, for example, use for making buckets. And then in the 1950s, um, a German chemist called Ziegler he discovered, partly also working with an Italian chemist called Natta, that if you take a titanium compound and an aluminium compound together, 
this was a really good catalyst. And by really good, I mean one gram of this catalyst could produce a ton of plastic. So that because titanium is relatively cheap, it means you don't even have to get the catalyst out of the plastic because there's so little of it in the plastic, you can just afford to sell it in your plastic bucket without losing much money. Does that mean there's probably a little bit of titanium in my plastic bucket at home? Yes. And there's probably more titanium from the fact that you cleaned your paintbrush when you were painting your kitchen or bedroom with white paint. So there's titanium. Well, that's titanium for you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Stay smart. Bye.